Doesn't Where's matter. my money? Sony 90 Records, million. Pay me my money. And that was your first album in how many years? Michael Jackson, man, told me never to sign with Sony Records. And now I know why he did. Michael Jackson told you never to sign with Sony. He had a bunch of problems with Sony. He went on stage and flicked them off and said F you to him. Well, after you get out of rehab, the next year, that's when you dropped the Love album? Uh, uh, I, they actually, so, Sony and Steve Zapp, they did it in such a very weird way. They decided to release my album when I was in rehab, man. In rehab. But what's the point, since you can't promote it, obviously, in Correct. rehab? Correct. Yeah, the point is, is look how bad Aaron's doing. Go pay attention to him. Let's, let's clickbait Aaron some more. Ah, okay. And Sony owes me money. That was the marketing. Sony owes you me being money. In rehab. That's why everyone keeps trying to attack me and destroy all my money making things and my shows and my concerts because I'm calling out on all, all the people that owe me money. Well, yeah, I mean, that album, sooner or later, like I said, does Where's not, my money? 90 Records, million. Pay me my money. And that was your first album in how many years? Michael Jackson, man, told me never to sign with Sony Records. And now I know why he did. Michael Jackson told you never to sign with Sony because he had a bunch of problems with Sony. He went on stage and flicked them off and said F you to him. Yeah! Tradition of great performers from Sammy Davis Jr. to James Brown to Jackie Wilson to Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly. The story is usually the same though, you know, these guys work really hard at their craft, but the story ends the same. They usually are broken, torn, and usually you're just sad, and the story's very sad in the end, because the companies take advantage of them, they really do, and um, um, Sony, <laughs> Sony, be being a uh, you know, being the artist that I am um, at Sony, I, I've, I've generated several billion dollars for Sony. Several billion. And um, they, they really thought that my mind is always on music and dancing. And, and, I, and it usually is, but they never thought that this performer myself would outthink them. Well, from your perception, why do you think a grown man like Michael like to be around children like yourself? Well, he told me, he told me, and because I, I asked him, I'm, you know me, I'm, I'm, yeah. y'all know me now, I'm very candid. I was like, so what's up with like, you know, your thing with like the little kids and like your statues around your house of like Peter Pan and stuff. It's like, what's up with that? Why, why do you call it, ne why are you calling it Neverland? <laughs> <laughs> like, you yeah. want to live forever? Like, no, he's like, he started giggling. And he said, he said, because the best way in the music industry to stay relevant is to always keep instilling a positive message into the younger youth and showing them different sides of life. Like for instance, like even me, like I invited a family over to our house the other day that we just met in the parking lot that their brakes broke down. Four kids, two parents, so they could swim in the pool because it was really hot. You know what I mean? And so there's there's the mentality that he had. And I spoke to him week, two weeks before, you know, he passed away. And he said, Man, I just can't take this anymore, man. This is really yeah, he's like, This is my this is this is the this is it, man. This is the final curtain call for me. He said So you guys kept in contact all for these years. years. Really? Yeah, up until right right before he died. And when he moved into the other place out in Beverly Hills or wherever he wherever it was at. And Yeah, well, and I mean, I think it was tough because everyone loved Michael Jackson, but then, you know, he started getting all the plastic surgery. And and, and so so people yeah, started looking know, at him he, a little do weird. You know why because that happens? Of that. Why? Body shaming. Mm. You I body mean, you body they, I get fillers yeah, in my face, man. I don't care. But okay. it's because I get body shamed because I have high cheekbones from being Native American Indian and then 
skinny here. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know? Michael Jackson's mom said he had a vitiligo and he didn't want to look like a, how she's described, a spotted cow. So that's why he bleached his skin. Exactly. I hate to say it, I have vitiligo and uh, I'm alert, totally, completely allergic to the sun. I'm not even supposed to be outside, actually. Even if I'm in the shade, the sun rays can destroy my skin. So it's like he 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 went through that and when I would hang out with Michael I would I would he would always have like a plumber soul or whatever what, what parcel or what a, what is it uh, the umbrellas like parcels or whatever they called okay I think that's what they're called so he would always have like these parcels right and every time I was at Neverland I was like put that shit down and I make his ass go out into the sunlight <laughs> parasol a parasol. Yeah, I never even heard of it, but yeah. yeah. yeah hey, he'd wear a mask all the time. It's kind of funny how I made him take the mask off when outside. <laughs> I made him put the, the yeah, parasol down. I, I was like, dude, just jump in the pool, man. Have some fun. Like, there's nobody around. Stop, stop tripping. I always was telling him that because yeah. he was so concerned about everyone else's opinions about him all the time. And I, I learned from people like that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let that kind of behavior affect me. How bad did Some you people. get? How bad did you get affected when you heard about how he died? Uh, I was, uh, I was just shocked. When when death hits me, it hits me in a really different way. I kind of just become shocked, and I introvert myself, and like I'll have really like bad like girl cries for like three seconds, and then I'll <laughs> try to like, back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm fine. And then, like you know, like but it, 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 any any death stayed. You know, it's it's sad because you got to remember. Ernest Hemingway said this. You know, every you know, not every man you know tru truly truly lives, but every man dies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we all take the same path in life. Thank you so much, London. Uh, that was our latest and last, very last single off of the DNA album. And that song is very special to us. Because that song is about family. And everybody in here, we all grew up together. We've been through highs and lows, ups and downs. You guys have been through it with us. We've been through it with you. And we thank you for taking us on that journey with you. We thank you for being a part of the Backstreet family for 29 years. We thank you for all the love for all the years. And tonight, uh, tonight we've got a little bit of heavy hearts because we lost one of our family members yesterday. And uh, we just wanted to find a moment in our show to recognize him. <laughs> Nick's little brother, Aaron Carter, passed away yesterday at 43 years old.
just can't stop.